August 29, the beheading of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was called by God to be the forerunner of his divine Son, in order to preserve his innocence and to improve the extraordinary graces which he had received. He was directed by the Holy Ghost to lead an austere and contemplative life in the wilderness, in continual exercise of devout prayer and penance from his infancy till he was thirty years of age. At this age, the faithful minister began to discharge his mission. He announced to all men the obligation they lay under of washing away their inequities with the tears of sincere compunction and proclaimed the Messiah who was then coming to make his appearance among them. He was received by the people as a true herald of the Most High God, and his voice was, as it were, a trumpet sounding from heaven to summon all men to avert the divine judgments and to prepare themselves to reap the benefit of mercy that was offered them. When the Tetrarch Herod Antipas, in defiance of all laws divine and human, married Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, who was yet living, St. John the Baptist boldly reprehended them for so scandalous an incest and adultery. And Herod, urged on by lust and anger, cast the saint into prison. About a year after St. John had been made a prisoner, Herod gave a splendid entertainment to the nobility of Galilee. Salome, the daughter of Herodias by her lawful husband, pleased Herod by dancing, insomuch that he promised her to grant whatsoever she asked. On this, Salome consulted her mother what to ask. Herodias instructed her daughter to demand the death of John the Baptist, and persuaded the young damsel to make it part of her petition that the head of the prisoner should be forthwith brought to her in a dish. This strange request startled the tyrant himself. He assented, however, and sent a soldier of his guard to behead the saint in prison, with an order to bring the head in a charger and present it to Salome. St. Jerome relates that Herodias made it her inhuman pastime to prick the sacred tongue of the head of St. John the Baptist with a dagger. Thus died the great forerunner of our blessed Savior, about two years and three months after his entrance upon his public ministry, about a year before the death of our blessed Redeemer. All the high graces with which St. John was favored sprang from his humility. In this, all his other virtues were founded. If we desire to form ourselves upon so great a model, we must, above all things, labor to lay the same deep foundation.